Some people think it would be great if every archaeological discovery could be fully understood from the moment it's found. We disagree. If that were the case, we'd have no mysteries to ponder. And who doesn't enjoy considering the great mysteries of the past every now and then? We're going to do it right now in this video. You don't have to be called Buffy to be a vampire slayer. All you need is this 19th century vampire slaying kit, which once belonged to Lord William Malcolm Haley. The British aristocrats' specialist tools were sold at auction in early July 2022. The unusual item eventually sold for just under £16,000, making more than three times its estimated price. While belief in vampires was common in the British Isles during the 17th and 18th centuries, that belief had tapered off by the 19th. Nobody really knows why Lord Haley, who was once the administrator of British India and lived from 1872 to 1969, felt the need to have such a kit at his disposal during his lifetime. Included in the vampire slaying kit are a set of crucifixes, a wooden stake and mallet, brass candlesticks, a brass powder flask, rosary beads, a gothic bible, and a vial of allegedly holy water. All that's missing are a few cloves of garlic. It's unclear whether Lord Haley saw the kit as a curiosity or a vital tool for self-defense, but it's likely that the kit's new owner fits into the former category. In May 2022, the organization National Museums of Scotland paid £1.8 million to acquire a beautiful silver casket. It's a stunning and unique artifact, but the fact that it's made of silver isn't what persuaded the organization to pay so much for it. Their motivation for acquiring it is that the casket is thought to have belonged to Mary, Queen of Scots. Historians think that they used it as a hiding place for her scandalous correspondence with the Earl of Bothwell. The relationship between the Queen and the Earl eventually became the pretext for Mary's forced abdication of the throne in 1567 after which she was imprisoned. The fact that the casket still exists at all is remarkable. It was made in Paris at the end of the 15th century, making it one of the few surviving examples of Renaissance-era French silversmithery. Most artifacts like this were melted down and sold in the 17th century by order of King Louis XIV so he could finance his endless wars. The letters that were supposedly once inside this casket detailed an illicit affair between the Queen and the Earl, and made reference to a conspiracy to kill Lord Darnley, who was the Queen's husband at the time. Mary always insisted the letters were forgeries, and her son James VI had them destroyed in 1584. The 16th century French astronomer Nostradamus is famous all over the world for his many writings, in which he's said to have predicted the future. The fact that all of his predictions are vague and none of his significant ones has come true has done nothing to dampen the enthusiasm of those who believe in his mystical powers. We wonder whether Nostradamus ever predicted that his manuscripts would be stolen. Whether he did or he didn't, the theft happened. The 500-page manuscript, entitled simply Nostradamus M. Prophecies, is thought to have been stolen from the Historical Study Center of the Barnabite Fathers in Rome in 2007. It was then seen on flea markets in Paris and tracked down to Karlruhe in Germany, but authorities only managed to get their hands on it when an art dealer tried to sell it through an auction house in Pforzheim. That led to investigators from the Cultural Heritage Protection Squad in Italy taking possession of the manuscript and bringing it back to Rome in May 2022. If there's a positive to be taken from the theft, it's that while the manuscript was officially stolen, it was examined by experts in Germany who were able to conclusively prove that it's an original work by Nostradamus rather than a forgery. During the Renaissance, almost everything could be turned into art. The proof is here in these beautiful knives all of which have musical scores engraved on their blades. They're Italian in origin and are known as notation knives. The songs and music engraved into them are partitions of Latin religious songs. Some of the best examples of the artifacts can be found on display within the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, England. Each knife has its own score, 
corresponding to an individual voice within a choir that can be performed by putting all the blades together. It's thought that during the 16th century, people would gather at feasts and then sing the score on their knives, with each of the dinner guests becoming a member of the choir. The artifacts are large and sharp, which might mean that they were used purely for slicing off cuts of meat, rather than eating with. In January 2021, members of England's Royal College of Music came together to record the music as per the directions on the blades. The resulting song isn't exactly likely to top the charts, but it's a fascinating echo of what dinner parties may have sounded like hundreds of years ago. Our next discovery takes us to the Netherlands, where archaeologists identified and unearthed a 2,000-year-old Roman temple complex in June 2022. The complex was found in the small village of Herwen Hemeling in Gelderland, not far from the Dutch border with Germany. This is already considered to be an archaeologically significant area, so much so that it's been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This was once the northernmost territory of the Roman Empire, and the temple complex might be the oldest of its kind in the Netherlands. At the scene, archaeologists have identified pieces of statues of the gods, painted plaster works and stone reliefs, as well as several complete votive stones. All of the votive stones are dedicated to a figure called Hercules Magusinus, who was a combination of Hercules from Greek myth and a character called Magusanus, who was worshipped by the Germanic tribes who lived here during the Roman era. By combining a local hero with a Roman god, the Romans might have been trying to placate the tribes, who were never totally happy with Roman rule and frequently rebelled. When this gilded Roman horse's head sculpture was found on a farmer's land in Germany in 2009, the farmer thought his luck was finally in and he was about to become rich. He was left disappointed when the state of Hesse paid him a mere 48,000 euros for the discovery, and so he decided to contest the amount. It took until 2018, but his persistence finally paid off. The life-sized head is all that remains of what would once have been a much larger structure that once stood outside a Roman fort outside the town of Waldgirmus. Archaeologists believe it to be a relic of the year 7 CE, and think it was most likely a statue of Emperor Augustus riding on horseback. The fate of the rest of the statue is unknown, but it might have been destroyed by Germanic tribes after the Roman defeat at the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. Dismembering the statue would have been a symbolic representation of the defeat of the occupying forces. After hearing testimony from archaeologists, a judge decided that a more appropriate reward for the farmer would be 773,000 euros. The largest concentration of stone stelae in Africa can be found in the Jedio zone of Ethiopia. In December 2021, we found out that the region's distinctively phallic stone megaliths are a whole 1,000 years older than was previously assumed. Ashinafi Zina, the author of the groundbreaking study, says that rather than being erected close to the year 1100, the bulk of the sculptures have been standing since somewhere around 50 BCE. The revised age of the monuments was arrived at after charcoal samples were taken from the bases of the stone phalli and subjected to scientific studying. There are several individual sites in the area that contain the megaliths, many of which have been neglected and now lay broken on the ground. But the most impressive collection can be found at Sakuro Soto. The new information has prompted UNESCO to consider making Sakuro Soto a UNESCO World Heritage Site, even though we know almost nothing about why the stones were carved and arranged in this pattern in the first place. We don't know who lived here 2,000 years ago, so we can't even begin to guess why they did the things they did. The old Krogan man did not meet a pleasant or peaceful end. That's one of the very few things we know about him with any degree of certainty. His remains were found in an Irish bog in 2003, but he met a violent demise about 2,000 years earlier. It's possible that he was a victim of human sacrifice, but his pattern of wounds isn't consistent with sacrificial practices. The old Krogan man was about 25 when he died, 
But at six feet tall, he would have been far taller than most of his peers. That might even have been the reason why he was targeted and attacked in such a savage way. This unfortunate individual was decapitated and then cleaved in two before being thrown into the bog. His sudden death might have been a major event at the time because all signs point to the idea of him being a person of significant social standing. His nails were short and well manicured, and the contents of his stomach reveal that he ate mainly wheat, meat, and buttermilk. He was also wearing a decorative leather band around one of his arms. The hill above the bog is known to have been used for the coronation of Irish kings in ancient times, so he might even have been a king killed by his own people. The history books will tell you that the game of golf was invented in Scotland during the 15th century. But history books sometimes lie. There was a game very much like golf played in China twice as long ago as that. And to prove it, here's a 1,000-year-old Chinese golf ball. The game involved knocking pitted balls into holes using sticks and was known as Qi Wan. It was especially popular with the Chinese ruling class. There are even court paintings depicting Emperor Chuan Di of the Ming Dynasty playing Qi Wan. It was thought to be his favorite hobby. The ceramic balls used in the game were very hard wearing, which explains why more than 1,800 examples have survived to the present day. Unlike modern golf balls, Qi Wan balls didn't spend any time sailing through the air. Qi Wan was more comparable to putting than golf with each ball traveling a few feet over a carpet rather than hundreds of feet across a field. Some ancient paintings seem to imply that there was a team version of the game that involved hitting the ball into an opposing team's goal, almost like hockey. But archaeologists are yet to find any direct evidence that such a game was ever played. For many years, archaeologists have wondered why there are so many similar-looking clay pots to be found in Jerusalem. All of the pots date back to the medieval era, and each of them has been discovered in a badly damaged state. In April 2022, a new theory emerged. These aren't clay pots at all. They are, in fact, the ancient equivalent of a hand grenade, and they date back to the Siege of Jerusalem. Research carried out by Professor Carney Matheson of Griffith University confirms that the vessels contained flammable liquids and explosive materials and could have caused explosive damage if thrown at the advancing crusading Europeans. Records from the Crusades state that there were sometimes explosions that created loud noises and bright flashes of light, and these devices might have been the culprits. Some historians wondered whether the explosions might have been caused by a mysterious substance called black powder, which the inhabitants of Jerusalem might have imported from China. But it's now thought more likely that this mixture was invented locally. Professor Matheson hopes to be able to prove that the explosive liquid inside these medieval grenades was naphtha, but he doesn't have quite enough evidence yet. The ancient Mayans might not have had dentists, but they did know a thing or two about dental care. We've known for a long time that the Maya liked to glue precious stones to their teeth as a form of decoration. But in May 2022, we found out that the glues they used to perform that binding might have had antibacterial properties, thus keeping the oral health of the civilization in check. Oral and dental health was a major problem 500 years ago. Teeth was listed as one of the top five causes of death in London, England, when a census called the London Bills of Mortality was carried out in the early 16th century. Based on the condition of Mayan teeth of the same era, teeth probably wouldn't even have been listed as a significant factor in mortality. We've always thought that the Mayans decorated their teeth for ritual purposes, but perhaps we should have been paying more attention to the fact that the Mayans thought that breathing was a connection to the divine. So the last thing they'd ever want was bad breath. The glue used in Mayan teeth bindings was made of pine resin, which would attack bacteria that cause plaque. We're not sure your dentist would recommend it, but it's effective. When you're an archaeologist, it might feel like once you've seen one terracotta figure, you've seen them all. That's not the case, though. 
and here's a terracotta figure that proves it. It's known as the supine figure, and it's one of the many terracotta figures that have been discovered in Emperor Qin Shi Huang's 2,200-year-old tomb in China. Of the 8,000 figures that have been identified within the tomb, this is the only one in a supine position. You'll probably have heard of all of the others. They're known as the Terracotta Army, and they're famous all over the world. Each of those figures is either in a sitting or standing pose, so the inclusion of just one figure laying on its back, with its right leg crossed over its left knee, is a puzzle for historians. One theory is that it represents an acrobat entertaining the emperor in the afterlife. The ancient Chinese people clearly believed that their fallen emperor would need an army to protect him in the afterlife, so it stands to reason that they'd also believe he'd need entertainment. We're still left wondering why they believed a single acrobat would be enough, but we might never get an answer to that question. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!